Right, this next small part of the series is just going to deal with what's inside this bell housing here and how we get the particular pieces out and how we can service the bottom bearing, the, the input seal, which can be a problem. And I've left everything in there, but what I have done is I've undone this brake shaft, or this brake lever. Now it sits on the outside of this shaft here, like that, and there's a key on the shaft to hold it in place. So I've undone that just to speed up the video a bit, and that then lets us pull that brake shaft out of the way and gives us clearer access inside here. So we've got that shaft out of the way. The next thing I like to do, I've got to come around behind the camera. Come around behind the camera without belt and everything. And I've got my MIG weld and pliers. If you haven't got some of them, boy, they're a handy thing. We'll just loosen the spring there. Loosen the spring here. That will bring the throw out fork or the throw out bearing assembly forward. Oh, that's stiff. I'll see if I can leave with the lever from the outside. It shouldn't be that stiff. It should be able to just slide back and forth under its own weight. So we have quite a bit of wear in there in the where the fork here um, rubs on the throw out carry and brings it forward and then the springs pull it backwards so we'll pop that in our box down here and these little springs get them upside down and they just come out without much of a to do. Now the next thing in the road is this and this is your throw out fork so your clutch pedal is the rod from the clutch pedal is hooked to this side which is the left hand side as you sit on the seat and that's held in by two screws with square heads on them and now a 3.8 spanner fits those. And where is my 3.8 spanner, Lance? Here we go. No, stop looking, I got it. A 3.8 spanner fits them. So we just need to undo that. Undo both sides. Now this shaft here will come out that way. And this, when we undo this one here, that'll let us withdraw this shaft and pull this out of the way. Now this one here is nice and free. This one, I did a bit of battling with that off camera, and it's a 3.8 square, yet if you have trouble, a 7 16th spanner, like on a flank drive, seems to help. But man, is this one tight. So I'm expecting the threads to be all ruined, so we'll just do this. And don't tell anyone we did that, it's against the rules. So we need to pull this fella right out. Oh, now it's gone hard. These were wired in. They were how they were supposed to be. I'm not sure what we're going to find, but anyway. got a good bend in it you can see yeah look I'm just not sure the threads you can actually see the bend in the bottom of it there in the bin okay so we should be able to just pop this out with our fingers now after, <laughs> after doing the hard yards This is more like how they are normally. Screw them out like that. This one doesn't want to move in here now. 
So we may be able to, um, just see if I can bump this out. Okay, we'll just see if I can bump this out a little bit. Okay, so that's on its way, nice and easy. We're not doing any damage there at all. And there's that side, and you can see that just sits in there, no worries. Into the box with that. Now, see what's going to go on here. I wonder if there's a heap of Loctite on it or something. Okay, I'll just see if I can bump this. Okay, that's starting to move. So I'll try on the outside here now. No, it didn't want to go. Tight, hey? I'll see if I can let's give this a jar down this way it is moving on the shaft but it's very tight we don't want to mar anything up here if we can possibly help it Yeah, so I'm trying to hold it on the outside there. We'll make sure we're not damaging that when we go back together. Are we still in frame? Oh yeah, bloody marvellous really. There we go. Now let's have a look and see. I'll just drag this bit of rag across. Oh, okay. What's going on there? Look at the wear in that shaft. Can you see that in through there? quite a lot of wear. There is bushes in the housing here and I'm expecting them to be not real good. And this little fella here, he should just come out now. So, but we'll check all the threads and all that. We'll probably get a new fella here, new one of these, or make one or something. We'll just see. And what we're left with now, is the start of actually getting the front seal and the front bearing carrier and all that down. Right, so this next part we're pulling off on the front of the transmission here. Um, on this tractor, I believe this job, this top seal can be done without having to split the tractor at the back of the gearbox. So even though we have that done, just for convenience for filming, I'm going to try and get this front housing off to replace the seal and the bearing without removing the back shaft. So it should happen. Now, the early tractors you could do this, but um, like the FE35s and um, these 65s, and I look, I just read the book to make sure, and the book for this tractor says we should be able to. Yet the 135s with the thicker PDO shaft, um, 
yeah, they need to be split at the back as well to pull it out. So let's poke along with this one. We'll just play it by ear and um, I think by reading the book, this model should be okay. So we're gonna give it a run. So all we're doing is starting by pulling off the bottom bearing cover. So that's a 916 socket and there's a gasket there just to stop oil leaking out. So so we'll actually put that in the box out of the way just so we're not loading up with rubbish here. Without too much junk. A little bit of rubbish in there. Okay, so now this circlip here, that's a snap ring. We have to get that off and that will let this housing come forward and bring the shaft forward a bit with it. So I'll get the, I had circlip pliers here, but I'd forgotten that it's a snap ring. So we'll go and get the snap ring pliers. Okay, we have the snap ring pliers here and these are bloody filthy. AWB, ABW. 70164-1 made in the USA so there you go that'd be a good quality one so I just like to remove this snap ring on the shaft here I'll turn it around see if I can this snap ring's been stretched a little bit in its lifetime by the feel of it. We'll have to remember to get ourselves a new one. It'd be good to be able to see. Worst of being an old fart. There we go, fought us all the way. Okay, now, you can see there's a thrust washer there, so that holds the gear forward in the bearing, so because of the angle for filming our shafts drop back a bit, but we, we're going to have to pull it forward, so I'll just start the journey by doing these up and that'll jack the housing forward a little bit they say these bolts should be three inches long but I just haven't got any three inches long okay so you can see that shaft drop down there Just take him nice and even. And that housing should come out. So the housing's there, there's, there's your front bearing with the gasket. So you can see all that. I'm just I'm just checking what you can see. Okay, so now um <laughs> This shaft needs to come forward. So normally, you could put a 9 16 bolt in there, bring the shaft forward, until that gear will find a part of the PDO shaft that drops down. So I'll just see So I don't think this one's going to happen. Um, we have got that movement there. So look, we'll just try it. 
we'll undo the front here undo this top shaft I should say always a dirty job and if that gear has dropped down sufficiently to clear the housing up in here we'll be okay I'll just give that a bit of a just a bit of a bump to break the gasket. See if I can just come in under the edge here. I need a smaller bar. So this body and the shaft should all come together. All right, and see that? This shaft, on this particular one, so, and I just read the manual and it said, pull this shaft forward enough that you should clear the bearing and this, this will come through and the gear will drop down a little bit. So I'll actually try and find a bolt and see. And the idea was that this shaft would come forward enough for the gear to go back on a piece of the spline, a piece of the shaft that wasn't as thick as the spline. And by doing that, this shaft would drop down enough. And you can see we're just not clearing. And that's as far forward as I believe I can get it. I'm just checking the back shaft there just to see. So it doesn't seem to want to happen on this tractor. I'll try and bump this shaft forward and see if it will come, but I, I feel that gear, is, that gear is forward as far as it'll go on that shaft, so. Yeah, it's just not going to work on this one. Okay, we'll bump that shaft backwards now. And 
we'll watch that gear drop down. After reading the book, I thought, right, I'm just going to give that a go and see if this is one of the models. But Okay, so the shaft has dropped, gone backwards. The gear has dropped down. This will now lift out in one piece and oh, that front gear is quite worn so what happens is this gear which is your PDO drive gear that sits down the bottom and it engages with that gear there and you can see that because of the bearing support here it just can't come out so it goes that way like that and to prove the point that it had to come had to be split at the back and go backwards there is the shaft and as you can see there can you see that okay as you can see there there's the spline where the gear is there is no way this shaft would have come forward enough for the gear to drop and go down the shaft just had to go out the backwards there's no way around it so for this piece here in our 65 mark ii it has to be split at the back of the gearbox as well to push this shaft back to get the front now you may be able to just get that back like split the tractor this much inch and a half you know put a couple of big long guide bolts and just push him back enough to see but look i had to try it the book i, <laughs> I have the original massey ferguson book but it must be for the mark one it says 65 and 675 and i know it has mark one and mark two in it but there's no way that that shaft could have come forward enough to drop that out this is supported at the back end there by a needle bearing so it would have had to come forward and clear this spline as well so in this case you can't do it but we have a couple of fe35s coming up and they assure me it will do that so there you go so that gear there appears to be in good order yep we've got to be happy with that into the box with that now this main drive here, so the little shaft is your main drive. So it comes in your main clutch plate here and drives your gearbox um, on the bottom gear that you can just see in the frame there. And then the PDO, this fella turns here on your PDO and that runs down and runs onto that gear there. And as long as your engine is running, um, yeah, you should have, well, w within reason, <laughs> you should have everything running nicely. So there you go. So that'll do for this video in just getting that front section out. Um, yeah, we thought we could get it out by just pulling that bottom shaft forward that extra bit. In this instance, we couldn't. So yeah, we're just going to have to leave it there. I'll do a separate video on this piece on the bench. We'll reseal it, put the bearings in all on the bench so when we come to put the gearbox back we'll have large components to put together like this is now.